This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Uh, this lecture is on chapter 22 of the free lecture notes and it's on interest. And in fact, it's really a lead in to the next chapter, which is very important, which is um, appraising investments, or what we call capital budgeting, which I'll explain when we come to it. Uh, but in order to um, explain the techniques involved, we need to go through this first on dealing with interest and, and how it works. And I'll split this lecture into two, otherwise it'll get too long. Uh, but first of all, uh, let's look at interest. Um, if we deposit money in the bank, uh, we're likely to earn interest. And there are two ways interest uh, can be accounted for. The first, the much the less common, is what we call simple interest. Where you deposit money, you receive interest, but the interest is effectively kept separate. It doesn't increase the amount on deposit. Let me show you what I mean with example one. A man invests $200 on the 1st of January each year. On the 31st December each year, simple interest is credited at 15%, but this interest is put into a separate account and does not in itself earn interest. Now here, there's not really any quick way of doing it. You need, we need to go through step by step. It's surely, he'll invest 200 on the 1st of January each year, so the first deposit, he puts 200 in the bank, and at the end of that first year, he'll get interest uh, at 15%, but that's kept separate. So the interest, 15% of 200, is 30. So here's his deposit, and this interest is being kept separate. At the start of the second year, he puts another 200 on deposit, so he's now got 400. It says he puts 200 each year. And so at the end of the second year, he'll get interest again at 15%, but on 400, which is 60. But again, it's kept separate. Uh, the third year, 1st of January, he puts another 200 in. So he's now got 600 on deposit. And at the end of the uh, third year, again, there'll be interest at 15% of 600, <clears throat> which is what, 90. At the beginning of the fourth year, another 200, so he's now 800 on deposit. And he says, what's the total amount standing to his credit? on 31st of December, following that fourth payment. Well, at the end of that fourth year, 31st December, the interest will be 15% of 800, which is 120. So how much has he got at the end of it all? He's got 800 on deposit, and in addition, there's total interest of 90, 180, or 300. I think that's correct. Uh, so in total, he's now got 1100. Okay, that is simple interest. But generally, we're talking about what we call compound interest, where the interest itself earns interest in later years. And so over the page, much more important you see the word compound interest. And with compound interest, the interest increases the amount of deposit, and so will mean we earn more interest in later years. Look at example two. Uh, a man invests 500 now for three years with interest at 10%, PA per annum per year. 
How much will be in his account after three years? Well, he starts off in the, um, in the first year investing 500. So first year, he puts in 500. At the end of the year, he'll get interest at 10%. £50 but this time the interest is added to the account. There is now 550 on deposit. So when we come to the end of the second year, the interest will be 10%, but of the full 550, uh, the interest will be 55. So the interest has earned interest because it increased the deposit. He's now got 605. He leaves it there for three years. So at the end of the third year, again, interest, but this time 10% of 605, uh, which would be $60.50. And therefore, at the end of the three years, his deposit has grown to 665.5. Now that's compound interest, where the interest keeps increasing the deposit and in itself earns interest. Um, and in the exam, it's always compound interest, unless you're specifically told otherwise. Now that's not hard, but obviously if I'd said, uh, oh, he leaves it there for 10 years, it's not difficult. It obviously takes time, keep adding on 10% um, each year. And so there is a quick way of dealing with it. In that, think about it, he started with 500. At the end of the first year, he has the 500 plus 10% or 0.1 of 500. And so 500 plus 0.1 of 500, well, it's the same as multiplied by 1.10. 500 times 1.10 is 550. And then what happens? The second year, um, we've got that 550, but we add on 0.1 of the whole amount. We multiply by 1.1 again. And if you multiply by 1.1 again, remember we've got 550, multiply by 1.1, ah, it comes to 605. So we now add 605 at the end of the second year. But then in the third year, what do we end up with? 605 plus 10% of it all, i.e. another, add on another 0.1, I'll multiply by 1.1. And 605 times 1.1 is 665.5. And so in fact, there is a little formula, but make sure it makes sense rather than just having learned it that we simply take the original 500, we multiply by, in this case, 1.10 to the power 3, and we get 665.5, and it's 1.10.1 because it's 10% uh, to the power 3 because it's 3 years. And so look at example three. A man invests 800 at 6% a year for five years. Well, instead of going through like we did before and do it year by year for five years, which takes time, we can write it straight down. He, he, he deposited 800. Each year we're adding on 6% or 0.06. So multiply by 1.06 each year, that will add on 6% to the power 5, because it's for 5 years. 1.06 each of 5 years. And what does that come to? It comes to 1070.58. So a nice little exercise.
And all right, you've got that formula there, uh, just above that example. The amount at the end of the nth year is P, P the principal, the original amount, year 800, times 1 plus R to the power N, where R is the rate of interest. N is the number of years. So do learn that. But that's adding on interest, it's compound interest. And as it says in the notes, this 1,070, that's how much it's grown to at the end of five years. It's referred to as the future value. Or, because it's how much it's going to at the end of the deposit, the terminal value. OK, well, that's fair enough. Uh, usually, as in these examples we've been doing, uh, we talk about interest as a yearly rate, 6% a year, and we're working out how much it's grown to after a set number of years. Uh, but it doesn't have to be yearly. Interest may be charged monthly, may be charged three monthly. It's usually yearly, but not always. Um, look at example four. A credit card company charges a nominal rate of interest of 2% a month. So here, OK, we're paying interest rather than earning it, but it's the same principle. Uh, but instead of quoting a yearly interest rate, we've quoted a monthly interest rate. And it says, if a customer has purchased $100 worth of goods on credit, calculate the amount she'll owe after one year, and also the annual percentage rate. I'll explain that in a moment. Well, no problem. It's the same formula. Because you see, uh, all right, this time we owe 100 rather than deposit 100. But, you know, just as you earn interest on deposits, you'll be owing interest on payments. Uh, and how much interest are they adding on? Every month they add on 2%. To add on 2%, we multiply by 1.02. And over a year, how many times will we be adding it on? 12 times. And so it's exactly the same as what we just did. It's 2% a period here per month for 12 periods. There are 12 months in a year. And so how much will we be owing at the end of a year? Well, 1.02 to the power 12 times 100. I get 124.34. Let me just check I got that right. 1.02 to the power 12. No, I'm, it isn't. Sorry. 1.02 to the power 12 is 1.2682 multiplied by 100, and it comes to 126.82. So that's exactly the same principle, exactly. It also says, what's the annual percentage rate? Well, you see, they used to try and cheat in that 2% a month. Oh, what's the interest over a year? It looks to an ordinary person as though 2% a month for 12 months is going to be uh, 24%. But in fact, it isn't, of course, because it's compounding. Every month you owe 2% more, and the next month is 2% on the total owing. And so, in fact, the total interest that uh, they're having to pay, it's 26.82 over the whole year on 100 that was originally owing. It's effectively 26.82%. And that's the actual interest rate or the annual percentage rate that's equivalent to 2% a month. 
Uh, and so, again, I hate writing this as a formula because it shouldn't really be a question of learning a formula. But if you think about it, 1 plus R, where R is the annual interest rate, will be equal to 1 plus R to the power 12, where R is the monthly interest rate. But here, I shouldn't need to write down, but 1 plus R, the monthly rate is 2%, so 1.02 to the power 12, which is 1.2682. And therefore R, subtract 1 from both sides, 0.2682, or 26.82%. All right, so that is hopefully, uh, as explained, this business of uh, compounding. I said I'd split this lecture into two, because although all the way through so far, uh, we've been saying how much will we have or how much will we owe at the end of the period, you'll find in the next chapter, it's far more common to effectively do it backwards, something we call discounting. Uh, so I'll stop this lecture here, but the next lecture, the second lecture on this chapter, I'll explain what discounting is uh, and how we deal with it.